Hello grade 11 math class, welcome back to another lecture. We have the first lesson of unit 5 today uh, called Exploring Data and we are going to look at data sets, uh, talk about some different definitions and eventually go into some graphs and z-scores which I think are very important for stats. Uh, so let's get right into it. We have the first definition, uh, outliers which are data points that are far away from the rest. They lie out there. And a line plot is something that's actually going to allow us to visualize uh, outliers. Uh, when we make them, we're going to be able to see the data in a different way. Uh, and it is in a very simple form. Let's hop right in. We're going to talk about some salaries first. Um, excellent uh, topic for data analysis. So. The payroll for three small companies is shown in this table, and each company has 12 employees. Um, we're going to talk about what the average means and how to look at them. I'm going to focus on media-focused advertising, but I encourage you to check out the other ones. So A, um, what does average mean to you? So there are three terms that we can use when we say average, but when I say average, I always mean the mean. So the mean is the sum of the numbers divided by the number of numbers. So in this case, we look at media focused advertising and we would add up all of the numbers. Uh, so 245,000, 162,000, 86,000, 71, 65, 61, 61, 57,500. We'd add them all up and we divide them by 12 because there's 12 numbers there, 12 employees. So I did that and I found out that the average um, value for that company for the mean is $88,608. Sounds pretty good. The, that's the average. You know, you take the all of them added up and you divide it by the number of people that there are and the average person makes $88,000. That sounds pretty good. Let's take a look at some other ways we can talk about the average. So average can also mean mode, an excellent way to look at, at, at uh, data. The mode is the most common number. That is the most common number. So the most common amount that people get paid in this company. If you check out the list of media focused advertising, uh, 61,000 is there twice. That is the most uh, of any number. There is no other doubles. So in this case, the most common number is 61,000. Again, like, you know, that's good. And, but it's lower than the mean. So when we talk about average, we could be talking about different things. The last one that we're going to talk about is the median. The median is the middle number. So if we went from the top and from the bottom, the same number, we would then get to the middle and that would be our median. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the median number Quick, I didn't actually do this first, it would be somewhere around here, 61,000, 57,000. So again, lower than the mean that we usually talk about as the average. So we'll, we'll say 57,500. Okay. So the average, when we talk about it, can be misleading in some ways, but I encourage you to find the uh, mean, median, and mode of uh, those different companies as well. Let's move on to B. Talk about another way we can look at this data, which is the range. So range, essentially we take the highest value and we subtract the lowest one. So for MFA or media focused advertising, the highest is 245,000. We subtract 27,300 as the lowest and get a huge range of 217,700. That is a monster range in how much people get paid. Let's check out, well, let's do AVS. I like that one because it demonstrates something, hint, hint. So we take the top number, which is 97,500, and we subtract the lowest number, which is only 2,250. If you work there, you make at least that. That is the lowest. Um, when you see that, that is kind of shocking compared to media-focused advertising. The range turns out to be only 42,250 between the top and the bottom employee. It just feels more fair to be working on a you know more level playing field obviously the workplaces could be different 
but that is a very different number than that. Uh, so different ways to look at numbers, I think, is the biggest key point we can impress here right now. Let's go, let's go. All right, so C asks us to examine the data. Examine the data. Which companies have data that we consider outliers? Explain. Uh, when I look at those numbers, uh, I see that MFA and um, I can't remember the last one is ah Computer Rescue. Computer Rescue both have numbers that are way outside the normal. They have a couple that are way higher. So there are some that are way higher. And I would consider those outliers, um, depending on how many there are as high, uh, that high, you can, you might not, uh, but you look at it in relation to how many other ones there are often. So uh, some that are way higher, uh, if you look at AVS, Auto Value Service, I believe, uh, they're a lot closer together. So I don't think it has any outliers. They are very predictable in how they range. If we continue on, let's see question D. So we determine the measures of central tendency for each company. Uh, so this is what I encourage you to do. You may have already done it. Congratulations. It seems that I have it listed here. So let's, I'll list it for you. Why not? Uh, let's make a little chart. Super fun. MFA. CR and AVS. So these are the companies and we have the mean, the median, and the mode here. So I'd encourage you to maybe pause and just see if you can do it on your own um, before I lay these out. Um, but yeah, if not, here we go. So the, me the mean, 70,000. Wow, I think I calculated the mean wrong when I was doing my previous calculations, which I apologize for, but it does seem that uh, I was not too far off. Okay, and we continue. <laughs> so that is the average for computer rescue and AVS is 62,480. So by these measures, AVS is the lowest. The median or the middle number uh, we said was 50,500. I got that one right. Let's see, 59,000. For CR and 58,900 for AVS, so they're very, very close. And then mode, the most common number. We already said it was 61,000 for MFA. Uh, the most common number for computer rescue is 96,500. And AVS is 55,250, which I believe is the entry level. So the entry level being the most common is um, that often happens, uh, but it's often not as high. As fifty-two thousand dollars. Uh, let's see. Let's see. As we go into E, our question is: Which measure of central tendency is most affected by outliers? Um, so, if we think about this a little bit, uh, the middle number, uh, which would be the median, we just count from the top and from the bottom, and we go middle, 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 right? So, if we just add one on top, it only shifts it half of a number up. So, an outlier is not too big a deal. Um, with the median. The mode is the most common number. So an outlier by definition has no effect on the mode because outliers are not common. They're not expected. So an outlier has the most uh, effect on the mean. Uh, if you have a very high number, it can drag the average or the mean way, way, way in one direction. It's called skewing it. So the mean is the most affected. Uh, and that's often why it's not the best season, especially in situations where there are executives making huge amounts of money compared to people at entry level making very, very little. So the mean is the most affected by outliers and sometimes not the best to work with. All right, F, uh, we are going to create a line plot. I'm going to attempt to do it quickly. Um, but here we go. We are going to look for outliers and we're going to not do it for three, we're gonna just do it for two. Um, so yeah, let's see, I got a line here. 
It's not a straight line. And the luxury of being able to start again. That is better. You're going to start at zero because you can't make less than zero, or I really hope you can't. And we're going to go up by 50s. Let's see if I can get this correct. 200, 250, 300, and then we have 350, and we call this end 400. Okay, so on the top, we're going to do computer rescue. We're going to map all of the values. Okay, so I'm looking at them here. I'm going to uh, point them on this dot. So just over 50,000 for computer rescue is where it starts. Uh, so about here, there, yeah, there's about four. So it's, it, you can't get them exactly where they are and line them all up, but you can go approximately. And then we go, you know, up to just under 55,000, something like that. Just over 55,000. There's a couple of them. There's a couple at um, just a hundred thousand we're just over a hundred thousand and we've got an executive at 360 something way up there so when we look at it like this we can clearly see that computer rescue has a person that makes way too much money compared to the rest of the people there's no way that they do that much more work anyway the outlier is right there here we go and abs goes on the bottom we have 50 so yeah we just start at 50 we have let's see we have a bunch that are right over 50 um going and working our way towards the 60,000 range there's a whole bunch just 70 one right around i'm gonna go around the 100 right Okay, so we can see here that there are no outliers. There's nothing out here, nothing out here. So AVS is a much more compact uh, structure. We can just see that that outlier of that person um, of computer rescue making a lot of money. So which measure of central tendency best illustrates the average salary for each company? Um, in these cases, when we're talking about um, salaries, it is often the median. The median is often the best. What is the middle number? The mode is also very useful to look at. What is the most common number? Let's continue. So another definition, we have dispersion. Um, dispersion is a measure that varies by the spread among the data in the set. Essentially, it is a measure of the range. Um, the highest number and the lowest number. How far apart are they? How disperse? Are they dispersion? If dispersion has a value of zero, all of the values are identical. They're all the same. Five, 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 five. There's no dispersion. If you have five, 10, 15, 20, you have some difference. You have some dispersion. It increases in value as the data gets more spread out. All right, let's look at Paulo. Paulo needs a new battery and he has to decide between brand X and brand Y. Um, brand X data is here, brand Y data is here, and we are given some information, the range, mean, median, mode, uh, and we're given a plot. Sweet, here we go. So we can first see that the mean, the median, and the mode, they're all pretty much the same, 5.7, 5.9, whatever. They're very, very close. But the range, the range we can see is the different one. 5.1 for brand X compared to 2.5 for brand Y. That means brand Y has a much more compact structure. They're much more, um, they, they might not last as long, but they definitely don't die as early. Brand X seems to have a very wide range. Let's find out why that might be. If we check out the plot, uh, we can see that there are a couple of dots down here near three and a couple of dots up here just above eight. But other than that, the range is reasonably similar to brand Y. If we draw a line here, there's only a couple outside. We draw a line here, there's only a couple outside. So could we consider these outliers or are they common enough uh, to be there? That's that's just a really good question uh, when we're examining this data. Um, and this way to look at it right here, it's very easy to see, like, could these two be outliers? Are these two bad batteries and these are just two really good batteries? We have this dispersion here in the way that it like goes from the middle to the end. There's a whole bunch in between. It's not like there's a bunch of space. So we need to look at data like that. 
So describe how the data set in each is distributed. Describe any similarities, differ similarities, differences, things like that. I think we just kind of did that, but let's record it. So we have A here. Uh, the range is wider. Range is wide for X. Uh, the mean, the median, and the mode are all the same or similar. Um, and like it really depends on what you want. Do you want the chance to get a ridiculously long lasting battery? Then maybe you go for uh, brand X. If you want a more, you know, you know a more exact what you're gonna get, maybe you go for brand Y. Let's see. Okay. So B, explain why the mean and the median do not fully describe the difference between these two brands of batteries. What is one measure of dispersion for the data? Explain what else we can learn from dispersion. Um, so the mean and the median, they really do not show uh, how clustered the data is. You can have data that's very far apart and have an average, uh, or data that is close and have an average that is the same. So for example, if we had five plus five and we divide it by two, because the number of numbers, we would get an average of five. That makes a lot of sense. If we had numbers of 10, and zero, we added them together. We divided them by the number of numbers, two. That is five. The mean is the same. However, the range is hugely different. There is no range for this one, but the range is 10 for this one. So the mean and median do not fully describe the difference between these batteries. The measure of dispersion, like range, would be really re is really, really good to look at to see what we're dealing with. Um, you can look just overall for consistency or clusters of dots. So consistency is what we're looking for. C, is the mode useful to compare in this situation? Um, it really is not. They're all the same. The mode is the same for both. The mode is the same. So no, it really isn't useful to look at when it's the same between each uh, sets of data. We know that the data is not the same. We looked at it on the plot, but the mode is the same. The median is the same. The mean is the same. How do we analyze this data? That's where all these new tools are going to start to come in, new ways to think about numbers. D. Suppose that one battery included this in the set for uh, brand Y is defective and it only lasts half a year instead of 5.9 years. To discuss how this would or would not uh, affect Paulo's decision. Um, would it affect Paul's decision if you had this? Okay, clearly the other batteries were perfectly normal, but in uh, this one battery seemed to be defective. Um, do you buy a company away from a company just because one battery is defective? Maybe if you previously bought that battery and it was defective, but I guarantee someone has bought a, a battery that's defective in you know each type. Uh, and you're gonna buy that as well. So um, we kind of have a bias when we look at that data. Uh, I really don't think that one outlier should move us, especially if it is so far away from the rest, like 0.5. Um, we can have definitely different opinions if it happens to you though. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know, but there's the summary and there are practice questions to do. Uh, thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you soon.